Whether you're not confident in the kitchen or you just want to save time, sandwiches are a great meal to fall back on. They come together in minutes, they're much cheaper than fast food, and with some healthy sides, they can also be rather healthy. If you need some inspiration, here's nine of my favorite easy sandwiches to make at home. Number one, salami and provolone. I like to use a hoagie roll, but use any bread you like. Sometimes hoagie rolls don't come pre-sliced, so if you're not confident with a knife, use pre-sliced loaf bread. The only other part of this sandwich that requires a knife is the tomato. You can leave the tomato out, of course, or if you're not confident with a knife, just serve cherry tomatoes on the side instead. If you want tomatoes that won't go bad quickly on you, get Roma tomatoes. I dress the bread with mayo and mustard, then I add a slice of provolone. And see, you can be lazy and just rip up the cheese to fit the bread. Then I layer on 12 slices of salami, then I add the tomato slices and some lettuce. And here's another pro tip. If you want your lettuce to not go bad on you, buy living lettuce. It's more expensive, sure, but you're much less likely to wind up throwing away rotten, soggy lettuce later in the week. Then I add pickles. And if I'm making the sandwich for my husband, I also add banana peppers. On the side, I'm serving some cuties and a banana to add some more fiber, vitamins, and minerals to the meal. Number two, turkey Swiss croissant witch. This is one of my husband's favorite sandwiches to make at home. It uses a croissant in place of bread. You can usually buy reasonably priced croissants at the bakery section of the grocery store, but if you can't find croissants or don't want to deal with cutting them in half, just use any pre-sliced bread you like. I dress both sides of the halved croissant with mustard and mayo, then I add two slices of Swiss, three to four slices of deli turkey breast, some sliced tomato, some lettuce, and some pickle. I served this sandwich with sugar snap peas for extra nutrition, and my husband really liked the flavor combination. Number three, tuna salad. I personally don't like canned tuna, but my husband loves tuna salad sandwiches. This one requires a little more work, but you can make a batch of the tuna salad on day one and keep it in the fridge for up to three days and make fresh sandwiches out of it for three days total. To prepare your celery, remove one to two stalks, wash them, cut off the white part and the leaves, then chop them into tiny pieces. Chop a small handful of black olives too if you wish. Then get out a sealable container and add to it two cans of drained tuna, the chopped celery and olives, two big spoonfuls of mayo, some salt and pepper, and stir. I put this on toasted white bread with some lettuce and served it with baby carrots for added nutrition. Then I popped the lid on the salad and put it in the fridge to use for the next couple of days. Just a note that if you make this sandwich and you have cats, beware. They will all come running when they hear you open that can. Number four, avocado and cucumber. Avocados have a reputation of going bad and winding up in the garbage. If this happens to you regularly, I recommend that you either make this sandwich the day you buy your ripe avocado or that you use store-bought guacamole instead. But if you love avocados and are comfortable with a knife, slice it down the middle, twist it open, then pound your knife's edge into the pit, making sure your other hand is nowhere near the avocado when you do this. I like to score the avocado flesh so it'll be easier to mash later. Then I slice a cucumber. If you're not confident with a knife, this is a good time to practice. Just go slowly and don't worry if your slices are uneven. Curl your fingers under as you cut, it's safer that way. Then scoop your avocado directly onto some whole wheat bread with a spoon, then mash it onto the bread with a fork. This way you won't have to wash a dirty bowl later. Add the sliced cucumber and two slices of cheddar cheese. This sandwich is already pretty healthy, but I served mine with some baby sweet peppers for extra nutrition. Number five, cucumber and cheese. For a simpler, more refreshing version of the avocado and cucumber sandwich, I like to slice some cucumber, then put it on sourdough bread with a light mayo spread and two slices of provolone. Top the cucumbers with some black pepper if you wish, and you have a simple but tasty sandwich. I served mine with potato chips since the sandwich is very low calorie. Number six, grilled cheese. Everyone has their own perfect method for making grilled cheese that they swear by, but it really isn't rocket science, and it all comes down to personal preference anyway. All you need is bread, cheese, fat, and a pan. I'm using sourdough bread and cheddar cheese, and if the cheese doesn't fit properly in the bread, just tear it up, it's fine, it'll melt. For me, less is more with grilled cheese, but use as much or as little cheese as you'd like. Some people insist that you have to spread the butter on the bread, but I think that's a hassle, especially if your butter is cold. So I just put the butter directly into the pan. Or if you don't have butter, you can always spread mayonnaise on the outside of your sandwich before you put it in the pan. I put my pan on medium heat and peek under my sandwich every minute or so until it's brown. Then I flip it, adding a little more butter if the pan is dry, and check my sandwich every minute or so for doneness. Some people like their grilled cheese with tomato soup, but I like to eat raw cherry tomatoes with mine. It adds some much needed brightness to the experience. Number seven, hot dogs. Yes, a hot dog is a sandwich for the purposes of this video. Hot dogs were a staple in college for me. They're cheap and they're very easy to make since they're already cooked and all you have to do is heat them up and maybe add some condiments. And here I have diced tomato, onion, relish, ketchup, and mustard. The easiest way to heat a hot dog is to stick it on a plate in the microwave on high for a minute, but I like using a pan on medium heat instead. It only takes a few minutes and you can add some nice color to your hot dogs this way. I like to toast my buns, but that's optional. My husband likes his on a pretzel bun with ketchup, mustard, relish, and onions. I added two hot links 
thanks to the bun here because as you can see the bun is much bigger than one hot link and also just one hot link and one bun is only about 400 calories which is not a full meal for most people. I made mine on a regular smaller hot dog bun with mustard, relish, diced tomatoes, and onion. To give my meal more calories and to make it even tastier I added potato chips. Not the healthiest thing but very tasty. Number eight, peanut butter and jelly. If you're not from the United States, these next two sandwiches might sound really weird to you, but if you grew up in the US like I did, you probably had a peanut butter sandwich at least once in your life. My husband taught me that toasting your bread makes it even tastier, so I recommend that if you have time. Spread peanut butter on one side, and then a jelly of your choice on the other. My favorite is blackberry, which I'm using here. The combination of salty and sweet is hard to beat, and peanut butter is actually pretty nutritious. It has protein and good fat in it, and it's also very inexpensive. And while I wouldn't consider peanut butter and jelly sandwiches a meal, they do make a nice little snack, even if you're an adult. Number nine, peanut butter and banana. Peanut butter and banana sandwiches are basically the same principle as peanut butter and jelly, but they use fresh fruit without any added sugar, so they're a little healthier. Slice up half a banana. You can either eat the leftover half, make another sandwich with it, or freeze it to use in smoothies later. Then spread peanut butter on two pieces of toast, add your banana slices, and presto. You can drizzle some honey on it as well, but I honestly don't think this sandwich needs it. So these are the sandwiches my husband and I have been eating every day for the past couple weeks. It saved me a lot of time and money, and I didn't have to do the dishes very often either. I don't recommend that you eat sandwiches every day for the rest of your life. It can get a little boring after a while, and processed meat and white bread aren't the healthiest things you can eat. But if you're pressed for time or money, they're a lifesaver, and I hope this video reminded you that the humble sandwich is a great lunchtime hero for a reason. If you want more easy recipes like this, check out the rest of my easy gentle cooking playlist. Thank you to my patrons, Chrissy, Britt, Honey Badgers, Megan M, Matthew, Jenny, Robert Z, Mercedes, Jocelyn, Manila, Gina, Megan, and Data Fox for helping me keep this channel going. Next month I'll be doing some more budgeting videos, so keep your eyes open for that. Bye!